Hello, everybody. Day 93, dear lord. Day 93 of the 100 Days of Narration Challenge. Ah, ah high pitch screaming. Anyway, day 93 of the 100 Days of Narration Challenge. We are into Terry Pratchett week. Bit of the way through into Terry Pratchett week. And a plane is flying overhead. Hello, plane. Hello. Hello, hello, plane. Hello, hello, go away. Thank you, plane. Go away. Go away. That would be cool. Go away. That'd be great. That'd be awesome. Nope. Still there. Never mind. Uh, anyway, so in the middle of Terry Pratchett week, and uh, I am to, for today's book, I'm going to read The Truth, which is uh, one of the, um, the newer ones. Uh, uh, well, Fairly new. I think it's actually fairly old at this point, but it's it's one with uh with um without the pre existing characters like Death or the Watch or the Witches or Rincewind and the Wizards. It's it's a it's a totally um new character, basically based upon the idea of the printing press uh coming to the world of Discworld <clears throat> for the very first time. So. In a land where magic roams freely and there's like, uh, and woodblock printing is still very much in, um, in effect, uh, there comes the age of mechanical printing with, uh, which makes things so much easier because with woodcut printing, it's basically like, uh, one person has to copy, uh, say a letter onto one piece of block of wood and, um, yeah, that's, um. That's annoying and hard to do or write it out by hand or what have you. I'm not describing this very well, am I? <coughs> uh, I think it will be better. Sorry, I'm a little bit sickly. I don't know why. <coughs> yeah. Might be to do with the uh, very cold Australian weather. Anyway, uh, Terry Pratchett's The Truth, the 25th Dis Discworld novel, apparently, according to the cover. And what do we have? Uh, and let's have a read of the blurb at the back, shall we? The truth. William just wants to get at the truth. Unfortunately, everyone else wants to get at William. And it's only the third edition. <clears throat> William the Word is the accidental editor of the Discworld's first newspaper. Let's try it again. William de Word is the accidental editor of the Discworld's first newspaper. Now he must cope with the traditional perils of a journalist. Now he must cope with the traditional perils of a journalist's life. People who want him dead, a recovering vampire with a suicidal fascination for flash photography, some more people who want him dead in a different way, and worst of all, uh, the man who keeps begging him to publish pictures of his humorously shaped potatoes yes 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 foreshadowing oh damn i ruined i ruined a i ruined a wonderful wonderful bit at the no i'm not gonna tell i'm gonna i'm not gonna say i'm gonna say I'm not gonna say you have to read it in the whole book I, I found this book quite fun actually because of the whole like um <clears throat> it's basically a book about uh well uh well not books but you know it's it's a printed word format about a printed word format that sounds a bit awkward when i say it that way but uh, you know I, I just love stuff i just love stuff like that you know stories about stories stories within stories and that kind of thing so this really this book really appealed to me on that level and it's a fun book in general as well. Like how how does a printing press how do how do newspapers work in a fantasy world with like magic and magicians and stuff like that? Magic and magicians, right? Okay. <clears throat> anyway, let's go to page. I'm um, trying to find a good place where there's a blank. Uh, here we go. <clears throat> page two hundred eighteen, and we'll start from this section. The dwarves were working on the press again, Sacharisa noted. Sacharisa. Oh, dear Lord, that's an awkward name. <clears throat> the dwarves were working on the press again, Sacharisa noticed. It seldom stayed the same shape for more than a couple of hours. The dwarves designed as they went along. It looked to Sarisha. Am I going to say Sarisha or Sarisa? Sarisha sounds... Sacharisha. Sacharisa. Such a risa is probably the correct saying, correct way of saying it, but such a, such a risha has a more 
rounded sound that sounds more feminine. This is a female character, right? It is a female character. Okay. <clears throat> it looked to Sasha, Ri Sasha Risha the, that the only tools a dwarf needed were his axe and some means of making fire. That will eventually get him a forge, and with, the, with that... <clears throat> damn. Pretty bad today. It looked to Sasha Risha that the only tools a dwarf needed were his axe and some means of making fire. That will eventually get him a forge, and with that he could make simple tools, and with those he could make more complex tools, and with complex tools a dwarf could more or less make anything. A couple of them were rummaging around in the industrial junk that had been piled against the walls. A couple of metal mangles had been melted down for their iron already, and the rocking horses were being used to melt lead. One or two of the dwarves had, had left the shed on mysterious errands, too, and had returned carrying small sacks and furtive expressions. A dwarf is also very good at making use of things other people have thrown away, even if they haven't actually thrown them even even if they haven't actually thrown them away yet. <clears throat> she was turning her attention to a report of the Nap Hill Jolly Pals annual meeting when a crash and some cursing in Ubervaldian, a good cursing language, made her made her run over to the cellar entrance. Are you all right, Mr. Shriek? Do you want me to get the dustpan and brush? Oh, dear Lord. And here we get some, uh, 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 Ubervaldian. Uh, Vrot Bodrovsky. Oh, dear Lord. It's It looks vaguely Russian, <clears throat> but obviously it's not. Bodrovsky. Zatsyets. Oh, sorry, Miss Natasha. There has been a minor portal on the road to progress. Sacha Risha made her way down the ladder. Arthur was at his makeshift bench. Boxes of demons hung on the walls. Some salamanders dozed in their cages in a big, dark jar. Land eels slithered. But a jar next to it was broken. <clears throat> oh, I should make mention the boxes of demons are what passes, what pass for cameras in the disc world. You see, it's, um, the idea is they got the technology for cameras, sort of, but instead of, like, having mechanical stuff inside the cameras, they instead have little demons inside the boxes that paint pictures really, really fast. <clears throat> uh, it works um, somewhat. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> I was clumsy and I looked and I knocked it over, said Otto, looking embarrassed. And now the stupid eel has gone behind the bench. Does it bite? Oh, no. They are very lazy wretches. What is this you've been working on, Otto? Sarisha said. Sacharisha said, turning to look closer at something big on the bench. He tried to dart in front of her. Oh, it is all very experimental. The way of making colored plates? Yes, but it is just a crude laugh up. Sacharisha caught sight of a movement out of the corner of her eye. The escaped land eel, having got bored behind the bench, was making a very sluggish bid for new horizons where an eel could wriggle proud and horizontal. Please don't, Otto began. Oh, it's all right. I'm not all that. Oh, it's all right. I'm not at all squeamish. Sacharisha's hand closed on the eel. She came to with Otto's black handkerchief being ha she came to with Otto's black handkerchief being flapped desperately in her face. Oh, my goodness, she said, trying to sit up. Otto's face was a picture of such terror that Sacharisha forgot her own splitting headache. <clears throat> Otto's face was a picture of such terror that Sacharisha forgot her own splitting headache for a moment. What's happened to you? she said. You look terrible. Otto jerked back tried to stand up, and half collapsed against the bench. <clears throat> bench? Otto jerked back. Otto jerked back, tried to stand up, and half collapsed against the bench, clutching at his chest. Cheese! He moaned. Please, get me some cheese! Oh, and a big apple! Something that bites! Please! There's nothing like that down here. Keep away from me! And do not breathe like that, Otto wailed. Like what? Like what? The bosoms! 
going in and out and up and down like that. I am a vampire. A fainting young lady. Please understand the panting, the heaving of the bosoms. It, it calls something terrible from within. With a lurch, he pushed himself upright and gripped the black twist of ribbon onto... With a lurch, he pushed himself upright and gripped the black twist of ribbon from his lapel. But I will be strong! He screamed. I will not let everyone down! <clears throat> he stood stiffly to attention, although slightly blurred because of the vibration shaking him from head to foot, and in a trembling voice sang, Oh, will you come to the mission? Will you come, come, come? There's a nice cup of tea and a bun and a bun. And um, I don't know how the last song actually goes. I'm assuming it's based upon... Um, one of the uh, abstinence songs, if there is such a thing, I'm guessing. But I, I have never, I've never, I, I mean, I'm, I'm not an alcoholic. I just, you know, enjoy an occasional drink now and then, here and there, or what have you. <clears throat> so I'm just gonna make up uh, <clears throat> the, the how the song is supposed to go. The ladder was suddenly alive with tum alive with tumbling dwarves. Are you all right, Miss? Said Botany, running forward with his axe. As he. Tried anything? No, no, he's... There drinks that's in their living veins. It's not the drink for me. Sweat was running down Otto's face. He stood with one hand pressed over his heart. That's right, Otto, shouted Sacharisha. Fight it! Fight it! She turned to the dwarves. Have any of you got any raw meat? To life anew and temperance too, and to pure cold water will come. Veins were throbbing on Otto's pale head. Got some fresh rat fillets upstairs, muttered one of the dwarves. Cost me tuppence. You got them right now, Goldie, snapped Botany. This looks bad. No, we can drink brandy and gin if it's handy, and we can sup whiskey and rum, but they drink, we abhor, sorry, we abhor, and we drink no more, is there? <coughs> tuppence is tuppence, that's all I'm saying. Look, he's starting to twitch, said Sacharisha. And he can't, and he can't sing either, said Godi. All right, all right, I'm going, I'm going. Sacharisha patted Otto's clammy hand. You can beat it, she said urgently. We're all here for you, aren't we, everyone? Aren't we? Under her baleful gaze, the dwarves responded with a choruses of, um, under her baleful gaze, the dwarves responded with a chorus of half-hearted uh, yeses, even though Bonnie's expression suggested that he wasn't certain that what Otto was here for. <clears throat> Goaty came back with a small package. Sacharisha snatched it. Goaty came back with a small package. Sacharisha snatched it out of his hand and held it out to Otto, who reared back. No, it's just rat, said Sacharisha. Perfectly okay. You're allowed rat, right? <clears throat> Otto froze for a moment and then snatched it up. The Otto froze for a moment and then snatched up the packet. He bit into it. In the, in the sudden silence, Sacharisha wondered if she wasn't hearing a very faint sound, like the straw at the bottom of a milkshake. After a few seconds, Otto opened his eyes, and and then looked sidelong at the door. Oh boy, this is a very bad reading today. Probably should have warmed up before I started doing this. After a few seconds, Otto opened his eyes, and then looked sidelong at the door. Ah, should have had my tea this morning. After a few seconds, Otto opened his eyes, and then looked sidelong at the dwarves. He dropped the packet. Oh, what shame. Where can I put my face? Oh, <sighs> what you must think of me. Sacharisha clapped with desperate enthusiasm. No, 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 we're all very impressed. Aren't we, everyone? Out of Otto's sight, she waved one hand very deliberately at the dwarves. There was another ragged chorus of agreement. 
I mean, I, I've been going through cold baths now for more than three months, Martha muttered Arda. It is such a disgusting thing to break down now and... Oh, raw meat's nothing, said Sacharisha. That's allowed, isn't it? Yes, but for a moment there I nearly... Yes, but you didn't, said Sacharisha. That's what's important. You wanted to and didn't. <clears throat> she turned to the dwarves. You can all go back to what you were doing, she said. Otto is perfectly all right now. Are you sure? Bodney began and then nodded. He'd rather have argued with a wild vampire than such a Risha at this moment. Right you are, miss. Otto sat down, wiping his forehead as the dwarves filed out. That's interesting. He's, he's um... It's dwarves pl as the plural. Plural, right? Plural. Plural. Uh, because uh, Terry Patrick has used dwarfs instead. What? Dwarfs? Dwarves. Dwarfs? Dwarves. No, dwarfs is much easier to say. I should be saying dwarfs now instead of dwarves. Dwarves. That's a dwarf. My god, that's a horrible thing. Scarfs. Scarves. Scarfs, scarves, scarves is so much easier to say. Why do we ever do that? You know, like if a word ends with an F, if you want to do a plural of the word, you have to make it to end, take off the F and then end it with V-E-S. Why would you do that? Why would the English language do that? Anyway. <clears throat> uh, Otto sat down, wiped his, wiping his forehead as the dwarves filed out. Sacharisha patted his hand. Do you want to drink? Oh! Of water, Otto, said Sacharisha. Oh, no, no, everything is okay, I think. Uh, oh, dear, my goodness, I am so sorry. You think you are on top of it and then suddenly it all comes back to you. Uh, what a day. Otto? Yes, miss? What actually happened when I grabbed the eel, Otto? <clears throat> he winced. I think this is maybe not the time. Otto, I saw things. There were flames and people and noise just for a moment. It was like watching a whole day go past in a second. What happened? <clears throat> well, Otto said reluctantly, you know how salamanders absorb light? Yes, of course. Well, the, the eels absorb dark light. Not darkness, exactly, but the light within darkness. Dark light, you see, dark light. Well, it has not been properly studied. It is heavier than normal light, you see. So most of it is under the sea or in the really deep caves of in Umbervalt. Umbervalt? Sorry, Uberfalt. Uh, but there is always a little of it even in normal darkness. It is a really very fascinating. It's a kind of magical light. Right. Could we just get more towards the point a bit? <clears throat> I, I have heard it said that dark light is the original light from which all other types of light came. Otto! He held up a pale hand. I have... I, I, I have to tell you these things. I, have you heard the theory that there is no such thing as the present? Because if it is divisible, then it cannot be the present. And if it is not the, and if it is not divisible, then it cannot have a beginning which connects to the past and an end that connects to the future. The philosopher, oh boy. The, the philosopher Heidehulen tells us that the universe is just a cold soup of time, all time mixed up together, and, and what we call the passage of time is merely quantum fluctuations in the fabric of space-time. You have very long winter evenings in Uberwald, don't you? You see, the dark light is held to the proof of this. Otto went on, ignoring her. It is the light without time. What it illuminates, you see, is not necessarily now. <clears throat> he paused, as if waiting for something. Are you saying it takes pictures 
of the past? said Sacharisha. Or the future? Or somewhere else? Of course, in reality, there is no difference. And all this you point at people's heads? Otto looked worried. I am finding strange things. All the dwarves, they say, dark light has odd effects. But they are very superstitious people, so I, I did not take that very seriously. However, the <clears throat> he, scrabbled among, he scrabbled among the debris. <clears throat> Let's try that again. He scrabbled among the debris on this bench and picked up an iconograph. Oh, oh dear, this is so complicated, said Otto. Look, the philosopher Keeling <coughs> really should have drunk that tea this morning. Oh dear, this is so complicated, said Otto. Look, the philosophy this the philosopher Kling says the mind has a dark and the light side, you see, and dark light is seen by the dark eyes of their mind. He paused again. Yes, says Sacharisha politely. I was waiting for the roll of thunder, said the vampire, but alas, this is not over about. Uh, you've lost me there, said Sacharisha. But, uh, you see, if I were to say something uh, portentous, 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 damn it. I know that word. But you see, if I was to say something portentous like the dark eyes of the mind, back home in Uvvot, uh, there would be a sudden crash of uh, thunder, said Otto. And if I was to point at a castle on the towering crag and say, yonder is the castle, a wolf would be bound to howl mournfully, he sighed. In their old country, the scenery is psychotropic and knows what is suspected of it. Here, alas, people just look at you in a funny way. All right, all right, it's a magical light that takes uncanny pictures, said Sacharisha. That's a very uh, newspaper way of putting it, said Otto politely. He showed her the iconograph. Look at this, uh, look at this fun. I wanted the picture of, of a dwarf working in the patrician study, and I got this. <clears throat> the picture was a wash of blurs and swirls, and there was a vague outline of a dwarf lying down on the floor and examining something. But superimposed on this was quite a clear picture of Lord Veterna Veterinari. Oh boy, I know that word. I've heard it said before. Superimposed on this was quite a clear picture of Lord Vetinari. Two pictures of Lord Vetinari, each figure staring at the other. Well, it's his office and he's always in there, said Sacharisha. Does the magic light pick that up? Maybe, said Otto. Uh, we know what that's... Uh... Oh, man. Uh... Ooh, one burp procession. I'm trying to translate the, uh, because, uh, I mean, I'm trying to translate the accent, but at the same time, some things like, uh, I would expect that, that to be actually that, but uh, Terry Pratchett has written it down as actually that, but uh, I think it represents Otto's, um, Otto going in and out of his accent, because in, in, the, in, the, in this book and in, uh, in future books, it's uh, revealed that Otto actually has a fairly light Ubervaldian accent, but... Uh, uh, it depends upon who he's talking to, really, you know. If he was talking to uh, the complete strangers, then the accent increases to the point where it's almost impossible to understand what he's saying. But uh, if, he's, if he's talking to friends, then the accent actually lightens up to the point where uh, it's, um, it's, uh, it's uh, less noticeable. So it's, it's a very fine line to, to, to dance upon. Anyway, keep on going. <clears throat> Uh, maybe, said Otto. Uh, we know that the what is physically there. It's not what is really there. Uh, look at this one. He handed her another picture. Oh, that's a good one of William, she said, in the cellar. And that's Lord de Word standing just behind him, isn't it? It is, said the vampire. I don't know the man. I, I do know that he was not he in the cellar when I took this picture, but you only have to talk to Mr. William for any length of time to see that, in the way, his father is always looking over his shoulder. That's creepy. 
Sacharisha looked around the cellar. The stone walls were old and stained, but they certainly weren't blackened. I just saw people, men fighting flames and silver rain. How can it rain underground? I do not know. That's why I study dark light. Noises above suggested that William and Goodmountain had returned. I wouldn't mention this to anyone else, said Sacharisha, heading for the ladder. We've got enough to deal with. That's creepy. And that seems to be a good point to end. Yeah, so, yeah, Dark Light. That was also one of the, um, yeah, it's a, it's a very interesting uh, concept, you know, using using true light to illuminate, you know, not just the present present, but all the different presences, presences? <laughs> Uh, uh, in the timeline. What could be, what has been, what never was, you know, all those things. It's a, it's a very, it's a very fascinating quantum idea, a light that can illuminate all those different uh, superpositionings of various things in an instant. Anyway, um, that was the 25th Discworld novel, The Truth by Terry Pratchett. And this was day 93, day 93 of the 100 Days of Narration Challenge. We are getting close to the end. It is amazing. Uh, and this was the third day of Terry Pratchett Week. I hope you stick around to hear me to do the rest of Terry Pratchett Week. Um, it should be fun, I hope. And hopefully, and tomorrow I should uh, probably, uh, you know, drink some tea, eat a green, a green apple before I do any of this. <clears throat> So I can warm up properly and uh, not do this whole <coughs> thing going on here. Anyway, thanks for listening. See you all tomorrow. Hey, you seem like a cool, wonderful, and or awesome individual with impeccable taste in voice actors. So why not follow me on Facebook or Twitter? You can keep up with the latest projects I'm in, or that my friends are in, or that you could be in because I occasionally post links to open editions to various projects that require voice acting out there, or that nobody's in, but they're interesting projects nonetheless that you may also find interesting. Also, lots of random thoughts about whatever's on my mind at that particular moment. Usually it's about food or video games or foodie video games. Mm. Anyway, you can follow me on Facebook at OmadonVA or Twitter at Omadon. Hope to see you there.